Hi everybody, this is Don Derwin over in uh, DC Designs uh, 14 with the Ellis Air Force Base in Nevada. And I've been um, working on this plane for a couple days, maybe two and a half days or something. Just trying to um, fix some stuff that is really annoying me about this airplane. Um, the one is um, this angle of attack indicator. It's not supposed to be white, it's supposed to be green on the top. And then amber in the middle. It's yellow now, I didn't change it, but it should be more of a more of an amber color. And this is fine. That's the one thing. Does kind of get me about this airplane. But I was able to make this green up on top. But it's still yellow because I didn't uh, get it yet. And another thing is this angle of attack indicator thing. When, when this is yellow, this should be at 15. Right smack dab right there in the middle, right there like that. Fifteen and this is center it should be. And that's yellow. This should be right there. Fifteen degrees. Right there. And it's not. It's way it's way down here, but I was well here, actually here, but I really don't know how to make this uh lighter because you can't see it at night. But um, I've managed to get this working. Maybe for the longest time it's uh, messing with the XML code. But um, the thing is if you XML it's really finicky if you accidentally put something in the wrong spot or something like that or accidentally going through it and accidentally just and it's not that finicky, but if you screw it up, it won't work at all. I was trying to work on it for about a day, trying to figure out what was going on, and the code was screwed up somewhere. I must have made a syntax error or something. And it, um, <laughs> it wasn't working. I'm like, hey, dummy, you know, why don't you start over from the new? And finally, it started to work. I'm like, Started to fine tune a little bit, but um, that took me I don't know, <laughs> many hours to figure that out. Now. But um, but this works a little bit better now. Another thing that was really annoying me is these things right here. Now they look beautiful because <laughs> I worked on them for hours. But um, these things here, they're like they're really orange, like like they they're like they like glow in the dark, like this really. Well, if you got the default one, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You know, at night, and it's not. And I was looking at the bitmap thing, and it, and it's not so much that um, it's the wrong color. This is the right color, except with the red on top of that, you know, because to make the, the night lighting, you just put a small little light layer of red here, you know, to cover the whole thing, and then it, it with the red and the white, it kind of makes it disappear, so it don't even look, so I was managed to uh, take that off of there, and I made it really dark, so that, I, I'll show you guys how to do that. It's kind of kind of interesting. I mean, and trying to figure out this airplane. It's um, I mean with the coding and stuff. I mean I did a lot with FSX, but there's only so much you can do. You know, somebody else's design. But um, but I, I I was able to actually look in it and try to fix. I mean try to fix some things that really annoyed me. You know? And so I got that fixed. I mean 
I think the plane is pretty cool. And then th this thing too here, this is the, the angle of attack indicator right here. This is what this is supposed to be and this is what that's supposed to be also. But in the book it's supposed to be at 15 right there. And look and then uh, that digital combat simulator, you know, that I, I tell you, when I looked at that I watched some videos on YouTube about that thing and um, that is a very accurate model of an F-14. I mean, I'm, I, I'm still amazed at it done. So if you want to fly something that's right to the book, you know, I don't, you know, fly that thing. I wish this thing was like that. You know, we have heat blur tell, hey, heat blur, why don't you make an F-14 for the flight simulator? <laughs> But anyway, so, so, but the thing is with, with this, I was not, I was able to adjust this a little bit, but it does not change the um, angle of attack indicator. It's, it's off. It's the angle of incidence that they use uh, for the length, angle of attack, and angle of the incidence is different than angle of attack, but um, I tried the other one, and I can't figure out how to work it, but somebody else had angle of attack indicator and they use the angle of incidence also. Um, but I was not able to change that. I don't know how. I really don't. I mean, that, but, but one of the nicest things is this thing. That looks so beautiful at night. And it looks great. It looked so terrible before. And then too, and then another couple of these things here. And now they look better now. And I didn't do too much to them, but um, I, I took a uh, one of the switches from the Digital Combat Simulator and I just pasted it on the, the thing. And it seemed to, I don't really, I don't think it put these lines here. I think they put these lines, but I to think this maybe is from the switch that I put on there. On the bitmap, I'll show you how to do that later. I mean, in a little bit. If, everybody, if anybody wants to, you know, figure that out. And then this two here, this looks nice and good. You know, with the default, it, 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 it's like glowing. You know, and then here, this looks nice now. And, you know, it's not too hard of a fix, you know, to do. Just finding the stuff that you've been doing it. But then that was really annoying me, you know, because I'd really like to fly this airplane. Then too, and another thing that it always annoys me right now, I haven't figured that out yet. But this thing, the speed brake, it does not work. It's up all the time, but don't go down. It's just up. You know, because one time I was look, looking, I was like, oh, I, must, I took off with the speed brake um, up, you know. And I, I, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try to look at the indicator. I tested it and it don't work. <laughs> and then these things are upside down. It's actually the oil pressure is supposed to be up here. But I haven't really figured out how to do that yet. But I don't know if that really matters. But um, and then too this trim thing is way down here in the bottom. It's really hard to see. And then the, the white floodlights don't work in this airplane also. I tried putting a flight Floodlights on them, they uh oh. Now what happened? Now I ain't got no lights. Anyway, I, I think I, I now it's going to be too dim when you first start out. Um, sorry, but I can't. I haven't figured out a way to uh, brighten those up. You know, so that means. Okay. Now it's so dim that you can't even see. But, uh, it's not good.
too, I like to put these a little dim like this, and then it looks, um, it looks a little bit nicer. But um, I've been spending, you know, two or three days, actually maybe more than that, maybe four days or something, trying to figure out how to fix things that really annoy me on this airplane. You know, so I could do some cool approaches. I was thinking maybe flying some IFR approaches with this thing or something, you know, at night. I fly mostly at night. It's because everyone's sleeping. But, um, but anyway, I fixed these and, you know, that looks way better than I did before. But, um, you know what happened to all my lights? So anyway, um, I was going to, um, oh, now I can see better. Uh, oh, now I can see that good. Oh, maybe it's because it was so bright. Or now I can see that better. So I was trying to um, fly with the light on. All right, maybe I can see that. But I, I'll sh show you how this works here and what I've done. And, and then I'll briefly try to um, show you guys how to do it if you guys want to um, you know, change modifications just a little bit for at least to make it um, seem a lot better to fly. But one thing is just always make backups of your stuff and make sure it's all working. But you can always reinstall it and, you know, save your stuff. So you can just put it back in and, you know, it's all finished. But I think those things really look good. I'm really impressed with myself. That I just... I, I, I was trying to work on a way to work on it. I'm like, hey, why don't I just do this? Because I thought it was going to be impossible to change it. But then I was like, you know what? Why don't I just do it this way, and it worked. I'll, I'll show you guys how, how to do that. But anyway, um, I was going to go over there and just land at the angle of attack and get her. I finally got it working. I actually been doing this about two and a half days, just non-stop, just trying to fix this thing. Maybe about three or four days. But I'm making some progress in it, you know. But anyway, I'd like to show you guys, so if you guys want to, you know, do the modification yourself, you can, if you like. But anyway, um, all right, so I'm just going to take off and then land over at um, Ellis Air Force Base and just come back. One, two, I also, uh, I changed the, um, the, the flap things a little bit, so I'm not really, now I, here, let me, here, you go all the way up. I mean, I just thought maybe just, you know, try it just to see. But because it's supposed to be 10 and then 35 degrees from flats. And that's what was in here before. But but now I think i got to make it so it goes four flaps instead of just three. But I don't know if that really makes a big difference. But... But there's one notch of flaps. Then that second notch of flaps. And then that's full flap. Then I think this one moves a little bit too. No, oh, maybe not. No, it's only three notches. It's okay, that's um One notch up there, another notch, next full up. So I guess there's only two. I guess maybe it's not four. I thought it was four. Actually, I didn't change that while I was doing that before. Then, actually, I did change the, the thing, but I don't think it affected the flaps at all. 
or bought the same as before. Probably just thought I might just put them in this this heck for the heck of it. I don't think that really matters one way or the other. But anyway, um just fly over there and watch this thing. Now it's at least a little bit better. And then this, if you can watch this thing, the angle of attack indicator. Here, it's right here. And you gotta put on the um, landing thing to get that to work. See, it's in here. But I, I, I've been, you know, like, it, it doesn't really do much, I mean, honestly, but, but, I don't know, I tried to But at least, you know, it's a little bit more close to where it's supposed to be. Anyway. Anyway. There's a military power in there, and the duff about 140. Right, actually, it's better that it's dim like that. Because before, that thing was hardly moving. But I think I noticed um, the one thing when I put those settings in there with the um, flaps while I'm doing 300 knots. Or but I mean, when I put those um, numbers in for the flaps, they're, they're, they do this auto. One zero zero, leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Dulles Tower, Tabru one zero zero, frequency change. But when I put, I noticed when I put those um, numbers in, um, flaps are they do everything? They do it automatically. So I don't know if that's better or not, but, but they do it automatically. I don't see the... I don't know exactly what's going on right there. Yeah, I mean, ever since I put those numbers in, they do it automatically. They didn't used to do that before. See, now it's green. See now the angle of attack indicator thing you can see it's that's because of the scenery. But yeah, see now the thing it's actually work, it starts to work now. But it the, if you look at that the, the angle of attack thing is different than what this is. Uh, Actually, I think maybe maybe it did make a little bit different because before it was at 126. Maybe it did kind of change it a little bit with the code that I wrote. Unless I got heavier or something. But anyway. It, you can do whatever you like if you're doing an ILS.
Yeah, I think uh, maybe my numbers did change that a little. Because before it was um, like 126. But now uh, this is the, the DLC thing that's working now too. Yeah, I don't know. Ever since I put those numbers in, I, I don't know. I changed that. So I don't know. And it's, um, and it could be a good thing, but I can show you what I've done. And you can always put it back to it like it was. But, like I said, make copies of the stuff before you do something to it. I just wanted to try it, you know, to see. But, oh, there's some spoilers. But, um, but see how they're, I don't know, it's kind of turning them down. But they're doing it automatically now. Before they didn't do that. So that's something that I learned. Because this now, actually, the last couple of flights, I noticed that. Because I put um, just the numbers in the flaps. But, so anyway, I suppose that could be a good thing or a bad thing. You know, I don't know, I kind of liked it before, but now it's doing all the flaps automatically. And I also changed the, um, the, 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 uh, moment of, um, inertia here. I, that really does help. I, I looked in the video, and, uh, you know, I watched it, and I was kind of, you know, you can tell it flies better. But, um, I was watching in the video, and, yeah, definitely, uh, I watched in a couple of videos, it definitely, there's a difference in the plane. I had visually seen it. It's not just a, you know, a myth thing there. I mean, it really, that is probably one of the best things that, you know, I've done with that. And the stability, the yaw stability a little bit, that really, really helps. But, um, yeah, now that's all the way up there. That's kind of strange there. But yeah, I think that was doing that before too. But anyway. It's actually, it really serves no purpose, I mean, to be honest with you. But it, makes it fly smoother. I mean, you're landing, I guess. But. But I'm really glad, I, I thought I was hopeless to figure that thing out, but all of a sudden I just was looking at some other code that somebody else wrote, and um, I'm like, hey, why don't I just do it this way? But then I realized that um, what I was doing wasn't wrong, it just, I made a mistake in the, the syntax somewhere, and the whole thing wasn't working, so my ideas was right, but the syntax made it um, useless. I mean, if the the XML is really finicky. Something's, you know, some things are 
more forgiving than others. But... Now this really gets me coming in on a low angle of attack here on a fast line. Yeah, this is a little bit um, different though, but at least the, the gauge is working. And I am high. But it was, it's, you'd rather be using those Vazzy lights right now, just all red says I'm really low. Which I am, but I'm just trying to use the angle of attack indicator here. And it's saying I'm too fast. Spoilers out there. said that this airplane will not stall and it, but I was testing out the angle of attack indicator trying to um, see um, see how much angle of attack I can put in it It's actually angled incidents, but and the HUD's uh, three point six. They were saying that they they couldn't stall this airplane. They just kept doing it like this. I just want to see how the flight dynamics were in a real airplane if, if that was um, the case. And I suppose that demonstrates that that don't stall, so I guess the aerodynamics are pretty close. <laughs> I've never really done that before so accurately. But, yeah. Figure out where I'm at here. Kind of cool. See how the flaps do that automatically? I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I suppose it's a good thing. 
Oh, I had it an afterburner going. But it's only doing 100 knots. Yeah, I suppose that is accurate. Actually, I didn't. This is the, that was the most I uh, was working on that. I just can't see it. I'm trying to use my mouse. I don't have a, one of those headset things, but uh, virtual reality, and that might be a good idea. Try one of those pretty soon. But the only bad thing is you can't see anything. <laughs> Try to hit a key or something, you can't see that. I suppose that would not be good. Flaps when you come down. trying to do a um, perfect landing, but I haven't really been practicing my landings here, but um, I don't know how long this video is going to be if I try um, showing that stuff. I 
think, I don't know, we'll see. I don't know, some people, if they have it painted, you know, some of the people have been painted for a while. But actually, I've never, um, really made a video about painting. XML code, you know, but I can show it here really quick. It's not that big a deal. Oh, two, uh, one thing I noticed in the, um, in the DC, I mean, in the digital combat simulator, you would um, turn off the engines just by pulling these back to idle. I tried to do it one time and it don't work. But here we got a, a dude from Canada. You gotta pull this thing here. Shut it off. I didn't know how to shut up the engines, but I seen him do it. I'm like, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool guy, I guess. I like real pilots that are flying these things. It uh, makes it nice. Some people they're not even they're not even pilots in the. You know, I don't know, whatever. But um But anyway. I'm gonna shut that off. But my desktop is, you know, pretty messy. I haven't um sort of this is one airplane I was painting. This thing this American Airlines on I took a picture. Actually, it took me a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, to do all this stuff. Really, um, pretty time-consuming. To photorealistic, and it looks good though. There's actually I got a YouTube on. I mean, a video on YouTube. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Actually, about actually about three weeks. Work on it every day. But um. <coughs> Um, the the XML code thing, yeah, this here, this um, this folder is well, I got these bookmarked, but um, I mean, this is actually one before the next one, but um. This is a model behavior. If you, well, maybe I should just do it here. This is where mine is. I'll just put it next to my flight simulator one. There is FSX there, and then here's the SDK. But actually, the SDK, I guess that, that's still valid with the FS2020. I was not sure of that. But, um, yeah, uh, looking at the stuff, I've never really looked at any any of the stuff before. But here, that's where I got this uh, bookmark there. But then, um, model behavior. Actually, it took me a while to figure out all the stuff was at, too. But, um, so I did, and I copied this, go copy here. But the only one thing is, um, I don't know why I cannot open it from here. It won't open. I don't know why. My other, the other XML files open. If you have an XML editor, you can do that. But um, I just this is just as easy. What I do, 
take the extension, it's XML, and just delete it. Don't delete the um, period. And then just go um, T, X, T, text. And change it. And then two to one thing about XML is that if you screw up one of these things, like this is this is um, a start and this is an end. If you screw up one of these, if you took this out, the whole thing won't work. Just one one of these little, you know, this is it's not too much of spaces here, but but it's got a start and end. You got to have a start and an end. And if you screw that up somehow, if you're you're making a big long code and but um this is the start and end you know but if it's there's this is actually pretty simple code here but if it's really longer i mean you sometimes you'd accidentally make a mistake because they got so many of them and if you got it open it's got to be an end that is one thing that, that that was for sure it won't work i mean you won't even go into it. but anyway this is text, and if it's in text, you know, try not to um, accidentally screw it up somehow. I, the one thing that I think I, but anyway, you can sit there and read through this stuff and kind of guess where where things are. You, like this is a start and it's an end. Um, but anyway, I was trying to find something to do. And and two and another thing too, I, I could not figure out which which code it was to do that. Oh, and this is too. You can write notes in here like this if you if you do that. Um, write one of those and then exclamation mark and then two spots. You can write your own little note here. You can write anything in between here. And those little dot dot or slashes and then that thing. You can write anything you want in there and you know for your you know notes but um i was doing this before and every now and then you just it, the code won't work i don't know why every now and then i just so that's why i always make backup of your backup and make it backup even after that you know so if something screws us so if you know if something's not working well throw it out and just put the new one in there because to try to find a mistake in this code is <laughs> You, it, you're wasting your time. <laughs> but um, copy and paste too. That's another thing too. I learned. Don't try to edit. Just copy and paste. You know, because all this stuff is pretty complicated. You know, this stuff here. It's it's um, supposed to be. They said backwards um, Polish notation or something. That's what they say it is. But it's backwards. This is like um, plus 180 degrees and then this is the um the aircrafting altitude indicator bank two degree increments or something like that but um i have trouble writing it i mean it's hard to write so i just when i know a piece of code works i copy it and you know if I, on other gauges i'll just copy and paste it and see if it works in my situation and th that to me is <laughs> I, cause I sit there and I try to write it myself, and I just can't do it. And I mean, sometimes you can, but some of the other stuff is just—I just find some other samples of code that other people wrote and copy and paste it. Here, okay, now here, this is the thing. It says template name, and how I found this was, I um. I didn't know which XML one it was in. It's like, you know, it could be anywhere. So what I did is I just, I took a bunch of code out. I mean, I took one piece of XML out until the gauge didn't work. So I took, you know, one XML file out until it stopped working. And I'm like, oh, that's the one. <laughs> you know, and then you go search. It's a, you know, kind of, um, you know, just take this whole thing out of the, the, the flight submitter and set it aside and open the game up see if your gauge works if it don't work hey this is one that does it then you could read it and find out um that's how i found this needle ang 
needle angle of attack. And then um, this is um, this is aircraft. And then incidence alpha degrees. And actually, the angle of incidence is actually something not the angle of attack, because I was you know trying to look, trying to. They do have an angle of attack indicator thing as my FSX thing right there. I was looking up that. And you you can um, if you got the SDK, you can look it up here. You can find all kinds of things for your airplane. Your, it says incidence alpha, but I suppose that's the, some other guy made a gauge. And um, that's what he uses also. So, but anyway, I tried. And, and the one thing too, I realized that you know, it just if I didn't put that zero there, I think the code didn't work. Just because there was no zero here. Don't figure, you know. I mean, it, you wouldn't think it matters, but evidently it did. But 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 I don't know. I just threw the code out because sometimes you just don't know if you got something screwed up. But um, it's not really too much the spacing, but try to keep it you know uniform to where, it, to where it's supposed to be but um so anyway this is 100 percent this is percent it's backwards too you got to read it backwards and um i mean it's written backwards but you kind of read it backwards too so it is 100 percent divided into here so that would give you a number i tried to you know, get a calculator. I was 100, 100 divided by, you know, 100 divided by 0.4 equals, you know, 250 or whatever. Maybe, I don't know, but this percentage would be 2.4. Who knows? So, but anyway, they had it at 0.6. And, um, it, I tried 1.3 at, at, at times and it was that didn't seem to work so I tried to go the other direction you know because I had it um so point four and so but I actually I think it might affect the the um the way that the thing works so just a little bit I mean, I'm not really too sure but I think it does seem to act a little bit different so but anyway, so that's one thing. That's how I finally got that gauge to like at least function like it's supposed to function. And then all you do is then you just come back in here and just put this thing back. Take the extension out again. And XML. And just put it back and you get your XML code there again. But this, it don't open up. For some reason I open it up. I don't know if I had an editor, maybe it would, but that one don't open up. I don't know why. Just all all three of these don't. They just don't open up. It's some um, kind of a mystery. But then, um, okay, that's the angle of attack indicator thing. That's one thing that was irritating me. And then, um, well, so I show. Um, Oh, here, might as well, um, do this thing about this, is, um, well, I did that B, and I, did, I didn't mess with that one. You could actually just copy your whole airplane, actually, what you could do is just copy the whole plane, and so, you know, if you screw something up, you can come back and get it. I didn't do that, but it's probably not such a bad idea. But if you screw it up, you just reinstall it all. Just um. But this is the the one thing I found, which is very helpful. This is I'm so, I'm so surprised. It's just like FSX, but it's I've never really tried to fix anything in here until now. I mean, I had this thing with the flight smear for like two years, and I <laughs> really never done anything with it until now. Because the airplane, I mean, it's pretty cool, but um, there's a lot of stuff that's screwed up on it. So at autopilot, they had a max bank of um, 65, which 
it's too much. You know, you it just <laughs> it just weighs super too much. You just when you go in a sixty five degree bank, you're gonna fall. Period. You know, unless you're doing like 250 knots. Um, so, but change it to um, 35 net, that works great. So that's a max bank. And actually, you know, I mean, you could actually, you know, change some of these numbers here, but it's not really, not really, I don't know, it's, not unless you knew exactly what you were doing there. This is an autopilot available equals one. Yes, it's available. Zero would be it's not available. You know, like this auto throttle managed by plane. Zero. You know, it's not available. I mean, you could put, you could change it to one, if you like. But that's not really so much. But the main thing is just the um. The bank says you got max pitch, and so your autopilot will go 25 degrees. And that's all it'll do in the pitch. If you want to make it more or less, you could do that. You know, but um, but yeah, but I, yeah, but anyway, um, that's all I wanted to do there, and then um, flight model. This is the one thing that I changed here. Um, this is mine. This this the empty um, empty weight pitch moment. <laughs> I forgot what it is. Moment of inertia. Yeah, moment of inertia. This is how heavy the plane is supposed to to react. You know, and if it's heavier, it's going to move slower and take more to move it. And so. And this plane I added, uh, I think, I'm not sure, I got my notes somewhere, but I had like um, 8,000 here and 8,000 here. And then like, um, uh, whatever. Yeah, well, for the sake of it, I could just get my notes. But anyway, here's my notes. Um, I just I added um, a total of um, 8,000 here, um, empty weight pitch. I just, you know, just put it randomly, put a bunch of numbers there and just give it some more weight. And then um, I added um, 3,000 to this number here, empty weight roll moment of emo or moment. Of inertia, and then I added um, eight thousand here. And then I added um, this is the um, empty weight coupled. What that means is the couple is like with the the yaw is going to affect the roll, and so they kind of interact, you know, with each other. And so you know, this is what this number is coupled. That's what that means. Coupled. There, there was a little article somewhere, I don't know, I got it somewhere, but on my phone, is helping you and read it. Um, but anyway, try that if you want to change the air, I mean, it, it makes it fly better, believe me. But actually, those numbers could be even increased, probably. And on too, another, another thing too, but the, um, the wheel, the the, the wheel like it goes halfway into the um, pavement uh, I don't know what's up with that and so that would have to be something here but I don't know if it would I don't know exactly um I mean maybe I could try to figure out here but I don't know man this is all, this is all the contact points and everything and I don't know if I want to even go there but it's, I don't think it's that much of a problem but Kind of looks dumb. My 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 wife was watching a video and she says, "Oh, why is that wheel going to the pavement?" But I I I don't think they got it wrong there. I had something's maybe the strut, the strut something to do with the strut. I don't know, but I'm not gonna mess with that. At the moment. Um, 
Oh, and then the, um, the aerodynamics. This is, um, um, I don't know if I was that one. No. It's the flight tuning. But I, too, I did this in the FSX, the, the flight tuning. Like, you know, the pitch stability. The pitch is like, um, the nose. Or, I mean, the, um, the nose going down and up, down and up. And then the roll stability is the roll if you're gonna do a you know a loop I mean not a loop but you know a roll and then yaw is the the um, nose going back and forth left and right but I noticed that the yaw was a little um, I didn't like the way it was you know too it's a little bit harder to go down the runway so I increased that by two the yaw I mean, if you could even do it yourself. You put a big, huge number in there, you'll see it. It really makes a difference. But, but two, I figured it's a good number. I didn't try to change it. But um, it helps. I mean, uh, of course, you maybe could have just used um, more moment of inertia. You know, maybe somebody will try that. But um, I didn't try it. I think it works all right now. Um, then this is the cockpit um, thing. I was I just about the um, this is where the flaps were. Um, this th these were all like this here. This one was here, and then I put a flaps level. This is the slats, and this is the flaps. Because I looked in the book and I just wanted to put the numbers there because I didn't know what these are, but it works fine just either way. I I. I I don't really think it makes a difference, but what I'm saying is it works automatically when you put these numbers in. That's the one thing I noticed. And flaps level 2 um, is 10, and that's what it says in the book. I got the NATOPS book, Naval Aviation and Training Program. You can look up it online and use uh, Google and do a search. You get the whole manual. It's like a thousand pages. I copied it and I got um, instant ink so I copied the whole thing but um, yeah, it's a PDF file look up um, so I looked up um, F-14 flight manual boom right there Google search got it right there no problem free it didn't cost anything it's got it's the D model though but good enough for simulator um, and then flaps level 335 degrees there and then flaps level pull what did they, they just had all these things here just like this here so if you want to put it back to where it's not automatic anywhere I kind of liked it the way it was that way because but um but that definitely I didn't know I don't know I just tried it so I guess I'll leave it there if I want to change it back maybe I will later But, um, I don't think I changed anything here. Oh, two and your little one, you know, when the thing is loading, all these stupid little things. Oh, the F-14 is one of the world's most famous multi I Like, man, just put some other, maybe some positive motivation. Like, you are the best programmer ever. <laughs> like, you are the best pilot. <laughs> so, make, make up your own little, uh, your stuff in there. That's <laughs> Whatever. But anyway, I don't think I changed anything here. Oh, this is your, um, your, um, what is it? Is it the camera? Oh, no, the exits. Yeah, you can look the stuff at Faxis if you need to. But, and, um, but, but whatever, you can. But, um, so I wrote this experiment. Oh, here I think that this is the, the one guy who made the um, gauge. Yeah, that, I found this online. I just copied this online. The one guy, um, I don't remember. Yeah, he's got a website and just, you can download all the stuff if you want. This is code for the, um, 
Um, but, you know, you can't really... You might be able to do something with it, but, I mean, like, if you see... Do I like some of this, this, you know... You These are variables. They make their own variables up. You know, like this is a like different thing. If you want to put a different number in there, you put a different number in there. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty complicated. I mean, I mean uh, it's pretty hard to to write actually. And here's this one. He's got all these gauges for the airplanes. You can put them in all sense. Um, I forgot what the, what the guy's name was. I was just trying to um, look up um, angle of attack indicator. Um, you know, he made an angle of attack indicator on. Um, um, well, you can't really see it now. And all these different planes, if you want to plane, you just put it in there. And, you know, his gauges will work in, in your indicator if you got a king error. And, you know, but, but whatever. I was just trying to look up his code, but he uses, um, uh, Same thing too here. He uses um, the angle of incidence, angle of incidence alpha right here. So and this is um, his code for writing the. Um, so he uses the angle of incidence also. Although it's not really the angle of attack. So but his that one works. So I'm like you know what, if he says it works, because I was kind of um, questioning. DC designs um code, but it does work. But I suppose maybe the other one I, I tried to write it and it didn't work for me, so I gave up. So anyway, all right. The one thing to and no the paint to and I was trying to figure out what paint did what. I mean what um. Oh, no, here I would, maybe the HUD. This is the HUD code I tried to look up. Um, I tried to um, figure out this HUD thing here. Um, this is the um, angle of attack indicator right here. And these are all the things in the... Um, You, all you do is get your your browser like this thing. You and Internet Explorer is actually opening it up, not the other one. But um, XML is XML markup language or something like that. I, I don't know. But um, I was looking at the code. Oh, here it is. Here is this code right here. Um, incidents and this is um how it's like three point one float. It's a decimal. It's like like in C language. One thing I like about the XML, I mean, you can read it. If this is in C++, <laughs> you'll never read it. You can't read it in C++. They even have colors in C++, too, and it's all code. And it's just all, you know, pictures. It's all code, man. What? There's a picture in there. But, um, but yeah, I guess it does that. Uh, um, so, anyway, this is a... So it would float then to, like, a four decimal point, you know, and when it has two, two brackets on here, it says, it just evaluate it. In other words, give a, give us a number and put it out on the screen, you know, and that's what, um, what it does. The angle of attack, um, bool, bool means that, you know, is it true or false, you know, um, is, um, circuit avionics on. If it's on, it'll put that up there. If it's off, it won't work. 
you know so it's bull it's like a true or false question but um yeah the two brackets means you know it's just a value that um but you can you know after a while you can, I mean but but I mean you can try to fix stuff on an airplane you don't I mean, you don't need to know everything, but so I went and if I, I don't, I don't think I, I was going to try and uh, change a number there, but I don't think I can. So I kind of just gave that up, so I don't, whatever. But, you know, if you ever wanted to try and, you know, try and figure out how everything works. They got a wind direction um, thing in here, too. There's some code in here about the wind direction, but I don't see it. And, um, and thing, I don't know why, I'll have to try and look that look into that later but but um but the one thing that was really making me mad was that those those things oh here are two I, I don't want to uh, go before I go anywhere you need one of these things a DX MP one of these that, um and I found a website actually the guy still makes them he's got a website so if you want to get one of those you definitely need that so this is um if you just put this website in I can't um, give it to you right now because I don't have a website myself but if you went and um, just searched it here this is the DX T BMP general um, texture manipulator that's how I found it but you can just maybe just type in a DXT BMP and probably get right to that you don't even write all this stuff but it's for FS 2002 FS 2000 combat flight simulator 2000 combat flight simulator 3 I guess well, I don't know I didn't do too much of that but um, but yeah you can download it I mean they got the same thing and it installs um, Oh, well, here. Could, oh, I just, um... Go to the website and just show you guys how you would do it if you're going to do it. So you just copy this. Copy. And but it's very helpful by knowing how to do this stuff because you can fix things in the airplane if you don't like them. So there it is right here. DXT BMP right here you can download it you just download it right here I downloaded it already but these are all the different versions of it so I just get download and then it'll download I already downloaded already all right it's probably maybe a little different but yeah it was made like long for you know see that airplane that was an FSX real and I don't even think FSX probably 2004 yeah, and CFS 2000. Yeah, I had all the um, flight simulators. <laughs> all the way at the, yeah, every single one right from the beginning. But it really, um, the, the way it's today, it's just like, oh, wow. But yeah, but you need one of that thing and two in, in a paint program. Um, I got, um, Adobe Photoshop. Thank God I don't got that. Now he came and buy this. But I had this. Yeah, I had Photoshop um, CS2. It's like seven hundred and fifty dollars that program. I, but I paid like three hundred and fifty. But this was a um, thing, and I got this one just as a um, as an upgrade. And um, uh, and now now they make you pay twenty dollars a month. For the thing, I, I paid like 70 bucks for this thing. Or no, actually $350 for that thing. But, I mean, now otherwise, you know, thank God I don't got to pay $20 a month. But that, you need that. And this, but, but, but this, but this thing you, you need. But, um, One 
Okay, painting night guard. This thing, this thing was really, I mean, it was pissing me off. I mean, it's like, I'm like, man, that looks so ugly. And it's like, ah, oh, God, is that terrible. I mean, I was working on it for about a day, just trying to figure out what the heck, what I can do with it. But anyway, this is, um, well, Flight Summer, they use um, D.DDS. And this thing converts the bitmaps to DDS. To hear, but you, um, let, let's say, well, I don't know where I'm at. go file, open, see where it's. Well, I'm painting night guard. Yeah, okay, that's the last one I was working on. So I'm in the same folder as at here. So so now we want um, this DDS. I'm gonna open up. So it's um whatever. I don't know if it's the right one or not. Um, yeah, I guess that. I guess it's this one. Okay, then you go open. Okay, there, then it's open. So, then you got to look to here and see here and see what the DDS, uh, DXT one, it's opaque. And actually, I don't know if it has an alpha channel on it or not, but I didn't use one. Um, <laughs> Adobe Creative Cloud paid $20 a month just to use their thing. But yeah, oh yeah, it's actually really helpful. Yeah, to make my videos actually, yeah, actually, but I have to pay more money. But it have Photoshop. But anyway, this is where your alpha channel is, and if you, what I, I, I saved it just in case I go, you go alpha, and then um, you'd want to um, export alpha channel. Okay, export alpha channel because you need to put an alpha channel it goes on top of it and it if you do it without an alpha channel it'll it won't look right um, so that's kind of a, a just a little thing that goes over top of it and then it smushes it together on, on the thing but but you always got to um save that I mean, so so what I do with me, I just um, like I go alpha. Um, I save mine, but I didn't know if it had one on there or not, so I just saved it anyway. So so alpha. Um, so I just wrote. Um, I typed in here alpha. I would write um, a l p h alpha, and then then I would just look up here alpha. And put a little slash there like this alpha instruments just with the gauges you should back, probably capitalize it to make it look the same but then miscellaneous then um, LM and actually I probably should have put PNG there but I didn't because I'm just lazy and that could could be a mistake but maybe when someday I'm trying to come back here and it's like what it's not the right one but it, it puts it all the way on the C, uh, the C drive right there. But and that's where all my alpha go, goes, and so that's where it puts them. So that's defaulted there. So so that's just fine, you know. And then so if I ever need the alpha, I'll just come back and get it and put it back on there after I'm done finishing my bitmap. Okay, and then you'll go right save. And but I already saved that I'm not going to do that. But then it'll it'll save it as a Windows bitmap. Um, here I could actually look at them here. What's they look like? I don't really want to show everybody about. Oh, wrong one. Not a painting, but if you want to fix the F14, you can see this is where all my alpha channels are. Alpha instrument. This is the one of them. 
I don't think that one looks like anything. Um, alpha dealing. So you see here, they look like this. And they're it's like a light map or something. I don't know, but but you can make them yourself. But and they they do they do they do serve a purpose, you know. But some of them don't look like here. There's another one for one of the things, and so you got to export that before you do anything so otherwise you won't have an alpha channel then you'll be like screwed you bitch up the creek out a paddle was then you need so, so what I done with this is this is this is the bitmap here and this is um this is what it was after oh here then so what I you would do is then you would go okay then you go after you got your um, alpha channel off of there, I mean saved. Then you go um, save as. Then you go a 24 bitmap image. Then you just save it, save it, and it'll save it. It'll save it right here in this folder. Then you can work with it. You can edit it with um, um, paint. And then so then it's a bitmap. Then you can do whatever you want with it. So here now this is a bitmap. And so this is the one for when there's during the day. And then the LM one. Um, here, this, this is the one. This is the one for at night. This is what they got in there, and I and I figured out why why it looks so terrible. So this is during the day, then at night this would go in there, and then, so this is that switch. You know, actually it took me a long time to figure out where that one was, even though it's kind of obvious. But I don't know. I didn't think it would, would be here. But this is that switch right here. It doesn't look like a switch, but it is. That's where it is. So I just took out the code until I found the switch didn't work. You know, I'm like, yeah, it's easy way to find it. You know, just take out some code, I mean some XML, and take it out. And if you notice, oh, my gauge is not there anymore. Well, then you say, hey, I found which one it's in. And I was surprised that um, this was actually one of them. But anyway, the the reason why it looked at night, why it was glowing, is not because this 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 layer, this um, little red thin layer of red here, is up on top of this thing, and it's it makes it look awful. And that's what was wrong with it. And I, I couldn't figure out. It's like, how am I going to fix that? I'm like, hmm, I don't know, man. It's like. And th these don't have an alpha. I don't know if they, I, I saved the alpha, but I didn't put the alpha channel back on it, and it works fine. So I guess you don't need one on this one. But you got to read the, the thing. But, um, so what i done... Is I went in... So this is where your paint program comes in. Now, I'm not going to show you guys how to um, paint with this thing, but I just wanted to um, show how I made that. Because actually, this program I made is so complicated. I mean, sometimes I don't even know how to use the thing fully yet. But, um, so bitmaps, so PSD, this is Photoshop. Okay, here, this is Photoshop here. Then these are layers here. So, what I done is these are these are different layers you put on here, and so there's the one layer because I, I made it, I made it um, darker that, and then there's another layer on top of that. And then I put that one there. Then this is the layer here, and that's the um, layer there. And then I put all these layers, and then this is the layer. Oh, here I gotta put these here. But this is how I did it. The first one. So 
the first one you got to make this layer first is a background it's always a background you always need to do it two layers on top of each other otherwise it won't work and then you just go you open it up and you can move them like you go on you can go file open and like anything you want and you go here and then, then you would hit this thing here I don't know if I want to do this or not and then you bring it over here and then you kind of put it on top of here but um, I'm not going to save this here but then there there's my layer up on top of there and then you just take this thing and try but um, I'm not going to save this because um, so this is this is how I done it here okay so this is my background layer I did that first and then put that other one on top of there which if you go same thing looks the same and then this is the night textures here and this is the other night texture I, I made two of them and then so what I done was I so this is the night texture here so I put that there right on top of here I mean I, I copied this from um, uh, I just I took this and I went and just take this and you go and then you go and then layer oh I won't I won't do it because I gotta be here um because I gotta be here if I mean you gotta have this this color blue otherwise it won't work so this layer has got to the layer that you're on has got to be the blue otherwise it won't work and you go layer and you go layer via copy and then it'll put it over here there via copy and um, see it's on layer 5 and then to, to rename your layer you go layer properties and then you could you know pick your layers like um like oh that's my um make up a name so you remember what it was that's my hardest thing when I'm making with this this paint trying to uh, uh, um, name it something that you remember what the fricky we're doing <laughs> when you come back to it three months later you're like what <laughs> I mean it's really a thing. it can be um <laughs> it can be pretty hard to it, 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 it really is when you don't work on something you come back and even the next day sometimes you're like what did I do there you know and trying to figure out what you've done but anyway so all I did was I, I copied and I and I pasted it and I made it another layer here this is this is the layer here this is the layer here I see that I just copied that and put it up there And then I just slapped it right on top of this thing. So this this is below here. So this is on top of here. I just pasted it right up there. So then it's not red anymore. So this part will shine like like it was so so bright. It's like it was lit up. Like lights were shining on it. And then I darkened it once with this. You know I went into. Um, I went into um, image or no edit um, no layer I had some uh, layer oh new adjustment layer new adjustment layer and then I put um, brightness contrast I went there brightness contrast okay and then you can go like this you can make it darker 
this one won't work because it's it's not it. Oh, I can't do that. It won't let me do that. So, but you can make it darker or brighter like this, you know, whatever. And then you can do the contrast like this a little. But because I don't want to save that thing, I just. I, I, I don't want to screw it up but and then so 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 and then what I did it did the whole thing then I took this little little eraser well I could probably just I guess I'll have to do it. So, okay, so I made it darker. Okay. Okay, and then you got, get this um, eraser, and then what I've done is I erased everything like here I erased all this and you gotta put it on the, the right layer there and then so I erased all this stuff I even did th this whole thing here you know but I went in close and I I don't know you could probably do things quicker like this but um, I'm not really doing this accurately I'm not gonna save this but you can go in there use that thing and then um, and if you really wanted to get accurate, you can go in here and, you know, try to get it however you wanted it. And then you just go, uh, fit on screen there. But, um, but I said, and it's a lot easier if you make it bigger. And then you can erase all the stuff that you put on there, just except that part right there. Okay, and then, you know, and then, um, if you want to do this and you can't see very well, you just, um, Take that off. No. What? I don't know. Yeah. Then just erase the things that you don't want to to look darker. You know, because I I want to make this look darker because that's what, that would be too bright. So I made that darker there. I made that, I did all that, and I made it there. And then I put that in the flight submitter. Looked at it, and was like, "Whoa, that's still too way too bright." I'm like, "Oh." And so then I made it really dark like that, and that's almost too bright, believe it or not. But that that's good. I mean, that, that worked all right. I was kind of debating if it was um too much. But and then I saved the bitmap. I just go um file. Save as, um, then you go down here and save as a bitmap, and then save or you know try to name it whatever you want. So it make it the third instrument copy and then save, and it'll save it. And then you know after you got that done, close it out. Then you're done with that. Then you open up here. DXT.BMB. Then you go file open. And, um, oh, wait, one thing too. Um, I forgot. So, um, if it's a bit bitmap, um, Open with uh, paint. There's a paint, and here it's in a pang. So, so file and save as pang picture. Then it, it 
it reduces the, the file size because the bitmap's probably too big. Makes it um, easier to, to run the flight simulator, I guess. The less file density, the easier it is to run, you know. So, and it's in a pang picture, so it's save as a pang. That's just the way this one was. Otherwise, I'd probably just save as a bitmap. And so, because this is a bitmap, and then uh, this is the pang. You can hardly tell the difference, but I want to see this in other different ones. But it makes it a little bit smaller. See, properties, it's um, 281 kilobytes in the bitmap. It's um, 12 megabytes, you know, so that's the difference. So the flight simulator wants small files, it'll run faster. That's how they want them. And then after you do that, you change it to a pang again, and then you go up and I'll open. And then whatever you, oh, this is a pang, okay, open this one. Okay, there, you open that one. Then you go um, alpha. Then you would go import alpha channel. Then it says this will replace current one, even though there's not one there. Then it'll open up to C, and then, um, that one is, well, I don't know which one it was, but, um, um, it was, um, uh, Alpha, LM, LM, it would be, it would be this, and then you go Alpha, LM, but there was no Alpha channel. I mean, there, I don't know if there was one, but I saved it. So then that would be there, and then you would go, and then file, and then you go save as a DDS texture, you can just, you know, whatever bitmap you wanted to save as, but this one requires a DDS texture, and then, and then you could, um, this is a DDS DX1 with no alpha, or you can make it um, a DDS DX1 with an alpha. This is a DDS um, with the DXT um, format. With this is with an alpha. There's only one that doesn't have one. And then the DDS boy. I don't know what all these different ones are, but um, see the see these were either in a DXT one or a DXT five. You, you'll see when you when you open it up which one it is. So now you want to make sure that you um, save it in the proper format. But this was in a DXT one. I didn't put alpha on it, alpha channel, and it, it looks fine. So I'm not gonna worry about it. So, but I saved the alpha if I wanted it, but I I didn't put it back on there. So and then you would save it as a DDS texture, and then you'll you'll see that uh, the um. Well, maybe I didn't put it here. Put it somewhere else. Here, and then I, this one's saved as a DDS. They look different. I mean, when you, when you, when you try to open it up, it won't, it won't even, no. Well, some of them don't even, you can't even open them up. Why well, should open one up that, um, um, yeah, this is a D. This is a, a, a it looks different. I mean, this has got an alpha channel on it. And they look different, you know, in here. This is, this is the, the day one. And this is the night one. You know, see, but it, you open it up and you can't, it don't look like anything. You can't tell. It's like, oh, well, you can't see it. You'd have to open it up in the DXT, but here you can see it, at least what it looks like, kind of, you know. And so, um, then that was that. That that's the one. And then, oh well, my code there. Um, 
and then um, the other other one that to actually finding all these things would be um, really hard. So I was going to show you really quick, and then this is the this is the other one. Uh, oh yeah, the link panel. And then I, I just put the, all the originals here. This is some of them. I was trying to figure out which one. And so, so what I've done is um, these are all DDS textures. Like there, you open it up, and you can't. Oh, you can see what this one is. But then these are all the different uh, stuff that they put in there. You know. Like this, these, and but um, and this is my painting, what I was doing. But the oh, and this is the thing that I that I wrote. Oh, I see you can't see it, but that little thing here, this right here, just the bitmap. This is actually the DDS, but um. Oh yeah, this is what it looks like at, um, yeah, actually, yeah, this is what it looks like. So all I did, all, um, this is the bitmap right here, right? Alright, so all I did is I, um, oh, opened it up with paint, it opened it up with paint. Oh, I better, uh, open, open with paint. And it's there and just, um, actually I should probably, I'm not going to do it now, but. And you just take this eyedropper thing, like if I wanted to um, change the color, which I will. I'm going to do that pretty soon here. Um, take the color, and you got there, and then um, maybe the pencil would be easier. And then I, I would just do it with the pencil. Um, here, like this, take the pencil, and then, sh then just go here and... Sh sh around it and just you know and try to make as neat as you possibly can you know and then just put them all in here like this and I mean you can use a brush but the brush is too big I know it takes a little bit takes a long time to do but you can just change it you know this is the one I done here I mean see it's not perfect but you know good enough but I think it would definitely look better at a different color but um, I'm going to do that later. But I'm going to close this and don't save. That's how you do that. And then um, open it up the same way I did before. And what that's what that one is. And you say, this one's got an alpha channel, so you got to take that off of there. And then the one more thing that I use that you'd have to look for is... Um, um, this thing here, this, this is that, um, oh, maybe, oh, here, th this is the original, this is what it looked like originally, this is what it looked like, here, here, look at the difference here, I got, um, um, so, So this is um that one. So this is mine. Th this is theirs. And but just by putting the, the the really ugly color there, I mean, how could this like you know? I can't you a little? I don't. Know, I don't know about this DC designs, man. It's like you know. I I think the fact the thing is it's only forty dollars. I I think maybe that's why they did didn't um try to make it look you know it's like well we're only selling for 40 bucks it should be 80 so I'm only gonna put half the work into it I, I think maybe that's why he didn't finish it totally you know it's like oh we're only gonna make 40 dollars oh, forget it I'm just gonna make half an airplane but I mean you know I mean I go through and I just put that switch in there um You know, I just went and copied it, you know, just um, copy and paste. I don't know if anybody knows how to do that, but here, um, I don't know, um, 
let's say print screen I actually I didn't know how to do this you just there's a key it says print screen on your computer then just take a little bitmap over here copy here and then um, then just name it whatever you want GG okay then you go open with paint then paste there and there I got my desktop right here and you just file save so easy yeah, even videos I can um, do whatever you want that's why I just keep that picture there. it's a picture of my, my wife and daughter <laughs> I just have that there so, so I could paste things on it but anyway I don't need to delete that. I don't need that. But um, <coughs> then I just put that one under, saved it, and um, but this is what it looks like if you're trying to look for it. That's what it looks like. So if you want to change it to yours, you can. So I think I covered everything. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't think there's much more I could. Color, I think I did everything already. Um, well, here, this, this is where the thing is, and there's this is there. It's a texture common. This is where all of them are here. You can open it here. These are different things. You gotta search through them and try to get the pictures that, that you think you know is, is your spot. And plus, to a pilot normal, th this is the um, metal, and then. Um, burner shockwave. This is the afterburner thing. They just put pic pictures of it there. And then it's the inside of the engine like that, you know. And then um, the canopy. And you just got to search through all the stuff and you, you know, figure out what you want to fix or but the actual airplane that's pretty cool airplane but I just wish they would have done a little bit more better job on it you know you shouldn't really have to do this you this, this is the, the the virtual cockpit the one with the pilots are sitting in there you can just you know from the outside you see in there and that and some other stuff and Actually, it's kind of nice to Windows 10. Some easier to do this. Windows 7, I don't think, um, does that. I don't. I don't know. But I, I mean, be able to see what you're typing here with the Alpha Channel. I mean, with the DDS textures, these are DDS, and you usually you can't even see them when you open them up. You just see nothing. So you got to every one up, and this is um. And I see you try to open it you don't see anything so you know there's different stuff about the airplane wheels the pilot's faces there no go go put your own face right there <laughs> wheel sauce nozzle and stuff like that and Flames, decal, ground power unit. I don't know what this some um, Jason thing is there. I don't know what that is. The, this one next to it, I have no idea. But I don't even know how to look that up. I don't know what kind of file that is. Never, uh, never understand. Never, I don't know. I don't know. And this is the um. You know, some of them open up, some of them don't. See, this is the, um, the ejection seat. Is, see, this is a, how they made that. So, uh, oh, yeah, actually, I know, just so you kind of know everything here, there's that thing there. And, um, that was that thing. 
lights and these are some of the gauges so you just kind of got an idea of you know what to look for try to change something but you know if you, I mean it's it's worth it I think that um and make your airplane you know look nicer instead of that ugly little thing that's making you mad you know make take some time to um well I'm not going to do that anymore but um if you want to make your airplane look a little bit better it's not that hard to do but anyway I think that's about it I think I'm finished and um hey um thanks for watching and um hope you liked the video and like and subscribe if you like and uh hopefully um maybe some other people can show me how to do some of this stuff about this um, F-14 but um the flight simulator 2020 I think it's um it's really neat and um and I will continue to to, to play it because I'm I love the thing actually I really I really like the flight simulator it's um it's really neat but anyway uh, thanks for watching and I hope you get some benefit out of this video for people that don't know how to paint and learn try to do some of the code that yourself and stuff like that and um, try to fix things and try to make things better that's all right and thanks for watching okay bye